Good morning guys and welcome back to my channel. So remember how I've been saying for a while that eventually I would get my perfume collection down to 20 or 25 perfumes or to the point that all of them would fit on a normal sized perfume tray? Well I actually did it and I'm going to share that with you today. So if you're new to my channel, thank you for stopping by. My name's Alithia, and if you don't know, I have had a bit of a perfume hobby verging on addiction for about the last two years. And what happened was when the pandemic hit, I decided to buy a perfume, and it was a blind buy because all of the testers were off the shelves, and it ended up being a fail. And that kind of sparked this whole like obsession with blind buying and purchasing online and doing hauls and this little perfume collection started to grow and it started out pretty innocently and I was only buying like a couple perfumes here or there and before I knew it, I ended up going through what would eventually be hundreds of bottles and I'm not kidding. And I've always managed to keep my personal collection down to about 100 and like between 50 and 150. I think at the most, the most that I ever actually had sitting on a shelf that I intended to keep at one point was about 100, 150, which is a lot of perfumes. And something that has been a trend on YouTube in the perfume community, and I'm guilty of it as well, I've done it myself, is these videos where we say keeping only 30 for life, keeping only 35, keeping only 10 for life. And it's always like an imaginary, what if, what if my house burned down and I had to start over? What if I had to get rid of everything except 20, 25, 30? What would those ones be? But we've never actually done that. <laughs> and I have been saying for a really long time, and it's been something that I have been grappling with is what ones would I keep? Would it be okay if I did that? Should I do that? Do I really want to get rid of all of them except for 30? And I finally had a moment this last month or so for me has been very transformative where I've just been feeling like I needed to get back to my roots. I needed to get back to my minimalist roots. And I have done a lot of decluttering, a lot of organizing. I'm going to share a lot of that with you guys in upcoming videos, but that included my perfumes. I basically took some time for myself. I needed that time. I needed to get away from social media. I needed to get off of YouTube for a little bit. Just take some time for myself because the problem is, I think especially as a creator, when you are creating content around certain things, you can't help but start to be influenced by your audience, what other creators are doing. You just can't help it. It becomes like this whole thing. And before you know it, you're no longer creating from within. You're creating based on as well what you think everybody else would like to see. And I was starting to get really influenced and I really needed to take some time where I could actually get clear in my head and realize, okay, what does Alithia want? Like, what do I want? And I know, I have known for a long time that I don't want 50 or 100 perfumes or 200 perfumes. If that works for somebody else, that's fantastic, but that does not work for me. I only want like 10 to 20 perfumes. I still want to declutter even further from where I am right now. I currently have 19 perfumes in my collection. That is all that is left. So today's video is going to be going through those perfumes with you and sharing with you my thoughts on them. And for those of you who've been here since the beginning, I think it'll be kind of interesting because you know the ups and downs I've had with certain perfumes. You know which ones have been my favorite since day one. And it'll be kind of interesting to see, at least I think it is, out of the hundreds and hundreds of perfumes I've tried, out of all those perfumes, these are the 19 that have made it to my final tray, so to speak. So a couple of quick points. This does not mean I will not buy perfumes anymore. It does not mean I will not review perfumes. It does not mean I will not do any more perfume videos. There will be lots of that coming up. I still have collaborations with companies. I'm still going to be working with companies. I'm still going to have perfumes sent to me and PR. I'm still going to buy perfumes to talk about on my channel and review with you guys. I'll still do the odd like haul here and there just for fun because I enjoy doing that and I enjoy discovering new perfumes. Just because because you have 10 pairs of shoes that you love doesn't mean you're no longer going to try shoes or buy shoes or wear different pairs of shoes. So it's the same thing. It just means that I'm going to buy a little bit more consciously. I'm going to make better decisions and I'm not going to allow myself to amass hundreds of perfumes. And I'm going to try going forward to do kind of a one in one out thing. So if I really love a perfume enough that I want to bring it into my collection, I'm going to try my best to move another one on. And I honestly think it's going to work very well for me and I think it's going to be very easy to do because honestly, eventually we get tired of perfumes. There's always some perfume that we don't like as much anymore a few months down the road as we thought we did and maybe we found out we're not wearing that perfume as much anymore. Um, so I think it's actually going to be a very easy thing for me to do and to maintain 
and it's going to be basically the same way I maintain the rest of my house. Yes, so to be clear, I know that 19 perfumes is not minimalist. You don't really need perfume at all. So if you really wanted to get down to the nitty gritty, perfume is not an essential item, but it is something that I love. And I still will allow myself to have this small collection of perfumes and it's still going to evolve and change and grow. And I will definitely still be doing perfume content. So do not worry about that. So this was the longest intro ever, but I feel like I needed to make this intro because I need to let you know where I'm at. And this is a huge change for my collection. It's a big change for my channel. It's a big change for me, but it's something that really had to happen. I just took a few weeks and I kind of got down to my roots and like blocked out the world and asked myself, what did I really want? And I just went to town decluttering and organizing my space. And it feels so good. I'm here to tell you as well that if you have a hard time letting go of your belongings, especially something that is as slippery of a slope as perfumes, I would invite you to try actually doing it. It's hard at first. It took me probably two or three weeks in total to get from what I had before, which was about 60 or 70, down to these 19. But what I will tell you is that the more I decluttered from my collection, the easier it was to make decisions, the easier it was to declutter another one. And honestly, now when I look at my perfumes, I have such an easier time making a decision about what am I gonna wear? Is there anything I don't truly love as much as I think I do? The more that I decluttered, the easier it became to continue decluttering. So I promise it does get easier if you're somebody who is overwhelmed by your belongings, whether it's shoes, handbags, perfume, dishes, home decor, whatever it is, the more that you declutter, the easier it becomes to declutter and the more you get used to having open space and the better it feels. And so yeah, with that long-winded intro out of the way, let's get into my updated perfume collection, keeping only 19. It feels really good to finally be doing this. I've done videos where I said I was only gonna keep 30 for, you know, keep only 30 and I didn't actually keep only 30 and it always felt so like disheartening to put all of them back on the shelf and know that I still had like 70 or 80 perfumes. This feels really, really good to make this video and I hope that you guys enjoy seeing what I kept. All right, so this is where I keep my perfumes. If you saw my recent updated bedroom tour, then you would have seen this. I'm very happy to say that this is all the perfumes I have at all. I have perfumes in um, a couple of Tupperware bins that are actually for sale or I'm going to be giving them away. I just haven't found new homes for them yet, but this is my entire collection. <laughs> so I'm really, really happy that I can finally say that I did finally whittle down my collection. This is something I have been dreaming of doing, fantasizing about doing for such a long time. I talked about it a little bit more in my intro but it feels so good you guys to finally know that when i look over at my tray these are my perfume i wear them they speak to me they mean something to me um yeah i talked about it more in the intro so i'm not going to go too much into detail about that but let's go through these perfumes and i will tell you my thoughts on them really quickly also i want to say a disclaimer there's one perfume in here that or one perfume that isn't in here that you guys are probably going to be wondering oh my gosh, I can't believe you don't have that one. What, what are you thinking? Like what's going on? Why would you get rid of it? Whatever. I'll talk about that perfume at the end. All right. So for starters, I just have them all sitting on this little gold tray. This is a gold and glass tray and it's mirrored. And I've had this for a really long time. I've kind of used it on and off a little bit over the last year. And I've kind of been playing around with trays, trying to figure out do I want round? Do I want marble? Do I want gold? Do I want silver? Couldn't really figure out what I wanted. This is the one that I stuck with and luckily it fits all the perfumes perfectly. And going forward, I'm not sure if I have mentioned this in the intro or not because I haven't filmed my intro yet, but going forward, it's going to be like a one in one out kind of thing. So if I bring a perfume in, it has to fit on the tray. If it doesn't fit on the tray, I can't have it. So again, this is something I might be being a little bit long-winded here. If you don't give yourself some sort of parameters in regards to what you're going to keep, then you're just going to keep accumulating because when it comes to perfumes, it's such a slippery slope and it's so easy to keep perfumes for the wrong reasons. Like for example, if one smells amazing, but you never wear it, but it smells amazing, you're going to keep it. Or if you have a perfume that you spent hundreds of dollars on, you're still going to be tempted to keep it because you spent hundreds of dollars on it. Um, and there's so many perfumes that are similar, but they have differences and there's nuances. For example, Black Opium versus Private Show versus Intense Cafe, but you really don't need all of them. 
like I said, what I'm doing is not going to work for everybody. What I've done is not going to work for everybody. Some people want a perfume collection with shelves and th shelves and shelves full of perfumes. Other people only want two or three or five. For me, this is what works. And actually, I probably will declutter it even further in the future. This is this was a huge step for me. I took my collection down from 50 to what it is now, which is less than 20, which is awesome. Um, a couple weeks ago, it was at 30, and I thought that was pretty good, and then I got it down to 25, and now it's down to 19. And, you know, really, the fewer I had, the easier it was to make decisions. The fewer I had, the easier it was to even let go of another one or another one. It just became so clear. Things just became so clear. And that tends to be what happens when you declutter. Even if you declutter your home, things start to become more clear. You start to be able to see what you really need, what you really use, what you can actually part ways with. When you have way too much of everything, it's very difficult to make decisions. There's always going to be a perfume that I can let go of at some point. So I think the one in one out system will be perfectly fine. So I hope that that makes sense. And I'm sorry for the long winded intro, but I feel that this needed a little bit of ex explanation because it's kind of a big deal to cut your collection down by more than half, especially when you are a perfume person. <laughs> okay, so I guess we'll just start in the back and I'm not gonna go through super in-depth with notes and everything, otherwise this video is gonna be super long, but I'm just gonna tell you what I kept. And basically, if you don't see it here, I let it go. And if you don't see it here, it doesn't mean it's not a good perfume. It doesn't mean that I still don't stand by whatever review I may have given it. Um, Unfortunately, us as perfume content creators, we always feel the need to justify things when we do things because certain people get very, very upset and certain people really take it personally when you declutter something, when you say it's really good and then you don't keep it. They like, they get really, really, they take it really personally. And this is not something that's meant to be taken personally, you guys. This is literally just scented water. It literally means nothing. It is just something that we enjoy wearing and buying and using and you know so if it's not here it doesn't mean that it's not great it just means that you know it wasn't meant to stay with me in my collection um yeah so let's begin so first of all in the very back on the left we have soul Chirosa brazilian crush 62 you guys know i love this one so much this is a really sexy gourmand um caramel pistachio like salted beachy smelling perfume that i think is so sexy and i love it so much and i also have the lotion of this that matches and it's phenomenal so this bottle isn't very pretty but this is so much more affordable than the actual perfume and i also do have the um a travel size of the actual perfume i'll go through my travel sizes quickly after so yeah i love this one and i do get a lot of use out of it and it just was like a no-brainer for me when i was decluttering Beside that one, we have one of my favorite vanillas of all time. We have Diptyque Eau Du Well. And this is a really beautiful, like foresty, piney kind of a vanilla perfume. Um, let me actually just take the cap off here. You know what else has happened, you guys, is that since I've decluttered and taken some time away from just focusing on nothing but perfume, um, oh, I appreciate my perfumes so much more now than I did a month ago. I, I appreciate them so much more. Like this is so much more special to me than when I had 60, 70, 80 bottles. So I'm really, really happy about that. So that's Eau Du Well. It's just such a beautiful, like, my hands are red and hot, you guys, because I'm hot. I've been filming all day and it's hot in my bedroom and I can't turn the AC on because otherwise it'll be too noisy. Um, but yeah, this is one of my favorite vanillas. It's very relaxing, comforting, and it's just so gorgeous for the fall and the winter, and I love it so much, and the bottle is super pretty. So that is Eau Du Well. Beside that one, we have Gold Couture. So Viva La Juicy Gold Couture, you guys know, is one of my favorites. This is also my boyfriend's, one of my boyfriend's favorite perfumes on me, and it's a very sweet, playful, flirty caramel with some berries, and I love it. Beside that one, we have Armani Code Satin. This is one of my favorite perfumes, and it's also discontinued, so I do actually have, I think, two backup bottles of this one, and once it runs out, I just won't purchase it anymore because I won't be able to find it, and I'll probably have to replace it with something else, but maybe by that time I'll be tired of it. I don't know, but this is a very, like, deep, sexy, um, I think, orange blossomy, shampoo-y kind of a gourmand fragrance almost. It has, like, praline, and I can't remember what all else is in here. But this is a very, very sexy perfume. 
Oh my gosh, it's so good, you guys. Armani is just knows how to make perfumes. Like Armani just knows how to do perfume. It is like the female equivalent of like Aqua di Gio Profumo for men, if you know what I'm talking about. It's just super, super sexy. And I can't believe that they don't make it anymore. I'm so sad. I like this better than the original Armani Code. Um, yeah, I love that one. That's a good date night one. And I was gonna say too, even having this size of collection, I feel like I have something for every occasion. Um, so I do not feel deprived. I do not feel like, you know, I don't have enough to choose from. On the contrary, I feel like I wear them more because now I can actually decide what I'm going to wear as opposed to just being totally overwhelmed every single day when I would look at them. Um, so beside that one, we have a favorite. And this is Christian Louboutin Luby Rouge. And this is a beautiful iris vanilla and cardamom fragrance. And I love it. This was a blind buy. You guys know the deal with this one. This is a very expensive high-end perfume, but it smells so luxurious and so expensive and so bougie. And it just makes me feel like a million bucks. And it's very sexy. It's powdery. It's a little bit woody. It's a little spicy, but in a soft kind of way. There's lots of vanilla. I just love it. So yeah, this one was a no-brainer for me. Um, in the next row, we have Chanel Chance Eau Tendre. This is the Eau de Parfum. I am going to get rid of the Eau de Toilette. I decided that I, oh my gosh, my stomach just growled. I decided that I don't need both. And the Eau de Parfum, I find I can smell this on my clothing for a lot longer, whereas the Eau de Toilette, I feel, disappears very quickly for me. Um, so this is just a beautiful, like, fresh, powdery, shampooy, fresh out of the shower, like, yellow floral. It's just gorgeous. So sophisticated. So easy to wear anytime, anywhere, any day of the week. I absolutely love it. This is a perfume I've gone full circle with. This was a perfume I did not like two and a half years ago. And lo and behold, it made it to the finale. <laughs> so go figure, right? Like sometimes perfumes just really surprise you. So I love that one. Beside that one is an oldie but a goodie. We have, please don't fall off, please don't fall off. We have Olympia from Paco Rabanne. So this one is one I don't wear as much anymore, but I still really, really love this one. And this is a salty vanilla perfume, but it also has like this punch to it. It has this it really packs a punch. It's got like a saltiness. It has a, I think there's ginger in here as well. Um, yeah, this one is quite bold and very, very sexy and very confident and almost a little bit obnoxious, but I really like it and my boyfriend loves it. And I've had this bottle forever. It's a very old bottle, so I do need to use it up. So hopefully now that I have fewer perfumes, I will actually wear them a little bit more and actually use them up. Beside that one, we have good old Kaoli Vanilla 28. Look at how dark that juice is, you guys. I've had this bottle forever, and I actually have two backup bottles of this one because it sells out so quickly, so when they were available, I purchased them because I didn't want to run out. And honestly, if I would have kept my perfume collection at the number it was, I don't think I would have run out because it was gonna, it would have taken me way too long to go through any of my perfumes. Um, but now that I've whittled it down, now I can actually wear them and I love this perfume so much you guys oh my gosh it's so good it's so good and like I said now that I have fewer perfumes I appreciate them so much more this is one of my favorite perfumes and it was just sitting there not getting attention not getting worn what was even the point I literally would only wear this like two or three times during the whole winter and then another year would go by and so that is Kelly Vanilla 28 absolutely love it in the next row, we have a Jo Malone. And this is Peony and Blush Suede. When I really looked at it and when I really decided, you know, I want my perfume collection to be like 20 perfumes or less, I want to whittle it down, this was the Jo Malone that really made it for me. So I love Peony and Blush Suede. This is like an apple, obviously peony. I think there's another floral note in here. And then there's this very soft leather undertone, but it's a very, very subtle like pretty bridal scent. Yeah, it's so pretty. It's just so beautiful. I'm so happy, I love this one. This is my one and only Jo Malone and it's beautiful and I know that I wear it. I get lots of use out of it, especially in the springtime. I was wearing this a lot. Beside that, we have Alien from Mugler. Of course, we have Alien. This one, to be honest, you guys, I do not wear this one as much either. I haven't worn it for quite a long time. And I actually thought maybe I should let it go just because I haven't worn it in so long, but I still really love it. 
I still really, really appreciate this scent and it's very bold and confident. It's that amber, jasmine, and woody perfume. Okay, beside that one, we have Versace Crystal Noir. So this one, honestly, I will be totally honest with you. I really, really like it. It's like this floral, I think violet, violet leaf, um, coconut, peppery fragrance. And it has like this cold, beachy, tropical vampire quality to it. And it's very, very sexy and very feminine and very, very beautiful. And I love the bottle and I really love the perfume, but I will be totally honest. The main reason I kept it is because my boyfriend is obsessed with this. He loves it. Like he has not gone this crazy for a perfume in a really long time. So that was my main um, like driving factor is that I know if I want something for date night that smells incredible and is going to quote unquote knock his socks off kind of thing. Um, this is a good perfume for that. And I do really, really like it. And I love the bottle. I think the bottle just looks so pretty, very aesthetically pleasing. Um, it's stunning. I mean, it is stunning. I, I really, really love that perfume, but I have to say that if I was going to weigh which was like the more deciding factor, it's probably because my boyfriend is so obsessed with it, if we're being honest, which is okay, you know? Um, and it does make me feel really sexy and it's, it is a really beautiful perfume. Like it's so pretty. I really enjoy wearing it. So Versace Crystal Noir, is a great one. This tray is going to be all kinds of messed up by the time I'm done. Beside that, we have Ariana Grande Cloud, another perfume that I have gone full circle with, a perfume that I didn't think I liked for the longest time, and lo and behold, it has made it to the finale, and there's a good chunk missing. I've been wearing it. So I don't think I have to tell you what it smells like. It's just a really like fluffy, airy, light, gourmand, lavender, coconut, whipped cream kind of thing and it smells a lot like Baccarat Rouge and I really like it and the other night I wore it and my boyfriend asked me if I was wearing Baccarat <laughs> again my daughter when I wear Baccarat she asks me if I'm wearing Cloud so it does smell a lot like Baccarat and it's like for me it's so enjoyable for being so cheap so that's why I kept it as you can see I do have Baccarat Rouge as well so that might have been a little bit overkill to keep both but this is that you know, throw it on when I'm just going outside for a walk, throw it on when I'm doing laundry, throw it on when I go to the gym. If I don't feel like spraying my super expensive bottle, but I want the same vibe, I can get that with this perfume. And I do really enjoy it. And it's exactly that. It's just an easy, it's just a really easy wear. So that's why I like that one. We all need those kind of no brainer, easy perfumes, right? And then um, in front of that one, I have a good old Chanel Chance, Eau de Toilette. So yeah, this is one that has been a favorite since I first brought it into my collection um, a year and a half ago. Haven't worn it as much lately, but it still has that sophisticated Chanel patchouli, pink pepper, pineapple. I think there's hyacinth or something in here as well. Iris, powdery. It just smells expensive. It smells like Chanel. Makes me feel very posh, very put together. If I don't know what to wear, but I want to smell posh and you know, sophisticated. This is just a really good one, a really easy one. And it's also kind of sexy too. My boyfriend likes it. So that's a good one. Beside that one, we have one that's um, a more new acquisition. I purchased it in the winter time last year, and this is Armani C Intense. And I love this perfume, you guys. This is a black currant benzoin, I think patchouli rose, perhaps. I can't quite remember what's all in it. Very pretty bottle, very aesthetically pleasing. Again, I think that Armani just knows how to do perfumes. And this is absolutely stunning. And I will also say that if there's one perfume, one perfume that inspired me to declutter, it was this one because if I can be so bold as to say, this perfume is what I want to smell like. This perfume is how I want to smell all the time. Obviously I want to wear different perfumes, but like if I had to summarize how I feel as a woman in one perfume and like my, my vibe, it would be Armani C Intense. It's just beautiful, it's sweet, it's sophisticated, it's feminine. That is Armani C Intense. And yeah, this was the perfume that really made me want to cut my collection down by more than half because I thought, honestly, if I could just keep this one and maybe a couple other perfumes, I would be a happy woman. And moving on to the last row. So on the left, the far left, we have good old Baccarat Rouge. 
So again, this is a perfume that I kind of went full circle with and didn't think I needed, and here I am with it in my final round. So this is a perfume that I think you guys all kind of know what it smells like. It's like resinous, burnt sugar, sponge sugar, sweet, natural, airy, effervescent, kind of luminous, vibrant. It's beautiful. It smells a lot like cloud, but it smells more natural and um, it's a very ambery kind of perfume, like amberwood, fur, resin, that kind of thing. I think Ambroxan too. Is it Ambroxan that's in this? I can't remember. Um, and this perfume for me, you guys, basically just smells like luxury. It just, it smells like luxury to me. Um, I just really, really like it. And it reminds me of being on vacation. I think because when I have been on vacation, I smell this on so many people. And this is a perfume that I kind of wish I wouldn't have been influenced by um, social media because if I would have smelled this by myself at a perfume counter, I think I would have loved it and been like, oh my gosh, what is that? That's incredible. I have to have it. But because I was so influenced by social media in the beginning with this perfume, it actually stopped me from purchasing it for a long time because it wasn't all it was hyped up to be. It's beautiful, but it wasn't like, it, there was so much hype that I was expecting like, volcanoes and explosions and everything else and that's not what I got with this perfume. It took me a long time to understand the subtlety and the beauty of this perfume and I really 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 enjoy it. So there you go. Baccarat Rouge has made it into my final my final few. Beside that we have good old Victor and Rolf Flower Bomb. Now this is a perfume that you guys know about if you've been watching my channel for any length of time. It's a very sweet orchid tea perfume and this was my perfume six, seven years ago. Lots of memories with this perfume. Um, it just continues to be, it continues to be a no fail, no brainer, grab and go, sexy, all occasion, lasts, smells really good. I just really like it. I think Flower Bomb is really beautiful and worth every penny, even though a lot of people have it and it's a little bit expensive. I still really, really like it. And you know, I actually notice now how sweet it is. It is so sweet. Um, I, I used to think it was more like strong, like patchouli, like whatever, but these days I'm like, my gosh, it is very, very sweet. But I really like it. And beside that, we have Mon Guerlain. And yes, I did decide to part ways with my Mon Guerlain Intense, which is crazy because I love that perfume. I love them both equally. And Mon Guerlain Intense is one that I like to wear in the winter. The reason I kept the original is because I really didn't think I needed both. Um, we only have winter here like half of the year, a third of the year, a third of the year, I guess. And I just didn't think it was necessary to have two Mon Guerlains in my collection. This is kind of my preference. Um, it's just like a relaxing, beautiful, feminine lavender perfume. It's vanilla. It's just very, very pretty and elegant, and it always pleases me. It always feels good to wear this perfume. So this one was a no-brainer. This one was like, I didn't even have to think twice. It was probably the second or third one that I picked when I was choosing. Beside that, we have one of my new favorite Chanel. This is Gabrielle Essence. And yes, I have decided to part ways with Coco Mademoiselle. I will do a video coming up on the perfumes that should have made it but didn't, or like people would have expected them to make it, but they didn't. And I'll talk about in a video why I decided ultimately not to keep them. So I won't talk about that here. But yeah, ultimately, this is just a very easy, beautiful, light, non-headache inducing, not too strong, very sophisticated perfume. It's very pretty. It's yellow floral. It's white floral. It's a little bit fruity. It's a little bit musky. It's a little bit powdery. It's that perfect springtime Chanel floral perfume and I love it. Love it, love it, love it. I've told you guys this for a long time that once this runs out, I would love a big bottle. So yeah, Gabrielle Essence is a no-brainer for me. And beside that, we have a black opium. And I think I will always have a black opium in my collection because I truly just love this whole scent profile. So this is the Illicit Green. And I love this whole sweet vanilla jasmine coffee kind of thing. This one is special because it has the addition of fig and also mandarin, I think Italian mandarin in here. So this is a very sweet coffee vanilla perfume and I just absolutely love it. And I could wear black opium every day. like. I know a lot of people don't like it. Even my boyfriend doesn't particularly care for black opium. He doesn't think it's that sexy. I love this perfume, um, especially for the winter. This one's actually a little bit more summertime appropriate because it is lighter and greener. Um, but yeah, I just love black opium and I will always have a black opium 
in my collection and it just so happens to be that this one is my current favorite i have let go of all my others and when this one runs out i will then decide if i want another black opium and which one it would be at that time i think my next favorite at the moment is neon actually because the neon is um is very bright and sweet and fruity, very playful. And I really like the addition of the fruit on top of the vanilla and the coffee. So yeah, that about concludes my updated collection, you guys. And I am running out of battery and my hand is red from holding the camera because I've been filming literally all day. I'm literally gonna get pressure ulcers on my hands pretty soon if I don't quit filming. Um, but I really wanted to share this with you guys because I know it's been a long time coming. Yeah, I guess there's really not much else to say but that. So that's my perfume collection. I look forward to talking to you guys down below. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram if you like uh, more home decor, minimalism, decluttering, and all things feminine and pretty and all of that kind of stuff. And thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all next time. I forgot to mention the elephant in the room which is Miss Dior Eau de Parfum. People probably are like dumbfounded if you've been watching my channel and it's probably frustrating for you maybe. And I kind of, like that was one of the things that stopped me from wanting to declutter or get rid of anything is because I know that some people are gonna be like, oh my gosh, I can't believe it. But the reason I haven't been wearing Miss Dior lately is because I have been finding it very, very strong lately. I don't know if my nose has changed or if it's because this is an old bottle and it's getting older and stronger, but this has been very strong for me lately, almost to the point that it's too strong and when I smell it, it almost immediately turns me off and gives me a headache. It could just be because this is an old bottle. This bottle is about three years old and it is quite strong and it's very concentrated. It's still one of my favorite perfumes of all time and it's still very beautiful, but, and I haven't gotten rid of it obviously, it's still sitting here and I still have all my backups. I've got like four backups in that bag. I think I need a break from it. I'm gonna take a break from it and come back to it. I'm not gonna get rid of it. One day this will be worth a lot of money and at the very least, it's a keepsake for my daughter. Um, this would be kind of a really beautiful like antique to pass down to my daughter because I remember, like I think to myself, I would love to have a bottle of my grandma's perfume, just like a used open bottle of my grandmother's perfume. I think that would be incredible. So this is, I think more, almost like a heirloom keepsake kind of thing at this point because it's been discontinued and reformulated and all of that stuff. But anyway, when it comes to the scent, um, I'm just really not sure what I'm doing with it right now. I just, lately it's been very strong for me. Again, doesn't mean I don't love it. I still think it's incredible and I still stand by, you know, obviously I've been in love with this perfume for a long time. Um, literally just one day it started bothering me a little bit and giving me a bit of a headache. So. Um, and these perfumes are just more, I just reach for them more. They're just easier. So, sorry, my phone just went off. Yeah, so I just find that a lot of the ones in here are just softer and easier. And maybe that's the direction I'm going is like softer and easier and more wearable. If you think about it, we've got, you know, Cloud, Gabrielle Essence, Mont Guerlain, Peony and Blush Suede, Chanso Tendre, Eau du Well. Like all of those are very soft, easy perfumes. Whereas Miss Dior is a very strong, heady, um, sweet patchouli. It's a very, very strong, one of the strongest perfumes I have. Um, so yeah, this is not gone, gone. It's just like, it needs to take a break. Um, this was actually number 20. So there would be room for it on the tray. There's 19 here. This would be number 20. Um, I just need to take a little break from it. So yeah, hopefully you guys understand that. I'm sure there's going to be some negative Nancy in the comments who <laughs> tears me a new one for this. But anyways, that's what it is. So I wanted to explain that to you guys. So yeah, that is my little elephant in the room, my little Miss Dior. She's not gone anywhere. She's just taking a little break. So that was it for today's video, you guys. I hope that you enjoyed seeing my updated perfume collection. Let me know down below your thoughts. I'm really excited to talk with you guys down below and hear what your thoughts are. And I hope that I inspired some of you to make some changes in your life and your collections as well. Getting rid of stuff doesn't mean you can't have fun. It doesn't mean you can't enjoy things. It just means that you have a lot more clarity and a lot easier time making decisions and you will truly value the things that you have a lot more once you're able to do this. So thank you for watching. I'll see you all very soon. Bye for now.